humans, I'm Yo Schiller, and welcome back to my Super Mario 3D World walkthrough. In the previous part, I completed the game. Or did I? <laughs> no, I, I, I technically didn't. See, the previous part of this walkthrough had my friends and I clear the final world of the game, World Crown. We took on the toughest levels of the game and obtained every collectible along the way. While doing all of this is necessary in order to complete the game, I still wouldn't necessarily say that I've 100% completed the game just yet. If I investigate the title screen for just a moment, I can point out that I have four stars on my save file. While four stars is certainly impressive in its own right, some people might comment that it's a little weird that there aren't five stars on the menu. Well, hey, those some people would be right, as it is possible to obtain a fifth star. And for today's video, I shall explain how to do so, as that fifth star is the final star and it is necessary for 100% completion. So I gotta get it before I officially conclude this walkthrough. But before I explain how to obtain this glorious fifth and final star, I feel the need to explain how to obtain the other four stars first. Now chances are if you're playing the game and you're playing every level and you're collecting every collectible along the way, then you're most likely going to obtain multiple stars on your save file at the same time. With that said, each star still has its own criteria to be earned. The first star is obtained once the player defeats Bowser in the castle level of World Bowser. Once the player touches the flagpole, watches the credits, and saves the game, a star will be added to the save file menu. The second star is obtained once a player has collected every green star from World 1 to World Flower. This includes the green stars in those challenge houses, and a set amount of green stars are required to play some of the later levels in the game anyway. But also, levels also contain stamps, and these stamps must be collected as well. However, if you were to collect every stamp in the game, you might notice that even after doing so, there are some empty spots on the stamp collection screen. That's okay. I'll explain why this is in just a moment. The third star is obtained by touching the top of the flagpole on every level. Touching the top of the flagpole will ensure that the flag is colored gold once the level is completed. This is also necessary to unlock the final world, World Crown. And yeah, by the time players unlock World Crown, these players should already have three stars on their save files. One for beating the main game, one for obtaining all the collectibles up to this point, and one for touching the top of the flagpole on all the levels up to this point. So naturally, in order to obtain the fourth star, players must clear World Crown. That once again means collecting every green star and stamp in this world, and that means touching the top of the flagpole on the last level, Champion's Road. And now we're finally at the fifth star. With every level cleared, every collectible obtained, and every top of a flagpole touched, what else could there possibly be? Well, this star is obtained by collecting the final few stamps in the game. Those are the ones that I mentioned may be missing from earlier. And these stamps are obtained by clearing every level as every character. Super Mario 3D World has five playable characters, and the game does keep track of which characters have touched each flagpole on every level. Note, not the top of the flagpole, just the flagpole in general. Once you beat the main game, the game will keep track of these statistics and tell you which characters still need to touch each flagpole. And once every character has touched a flagpole in a world, a paw print symbol will be displayed on the game's stats screen. It's a big ask, but I do have some tips on how to make this task a little less tedious. It's not even possible to touch the flagpole with every character in your initial playthrough anyway, since you don't unlock Rosalina until you've beaten the main game. So no matter what, you're basically gonna have to replay the game anyway. Now I was fortunate enough to be able to record this entire series as a four player co-op walkthrough with my friends online. So we were often able to have four characters touch the flagpole at the end of each level. This meant that when it came down to me trying to get my fifth star for my save file, I only had to clear most of the levels as one character. So I could just play these levels by myself. And since I no longer needed to obtain any collectibles or worry about touching the top of the flagpole, I could essentially just speed through these levels. And as a result, each of these levels only wound up being about a minute or so long. And for the most part, I had to clear most of these levels as Rosa Alina, since she was unlocked later in the game, and she makes these levels even easier to complete than they might have originally been intended to be. Sure, there's still about 40 levels or so that must be cleared, but when each level only takes a minute or two on average to clear, this means that the whole task really only winds up taking about an hour. But that's in my experience of needing to clear a level as just one character. What about for levels that required multiple characters to touch the flagpole? I mean, there were a couple levels in my walkthrough where we didn't touch the flagpole as four characters, so what did I do in those cases where I had to touch the flagpole as two or even three characters? Well, for that, I have some advice. 
The first bit of advice is obvious, see if you can play with a friend. This game does offer online play after all, so it's entirely possible to just go on Twitter and ask a friend to help you clear some levels. Since you wouldn't need to collect anything, you could actually just try to race to the end. Just make sure that all characters actually touch the flagpole once you complete the level. In the event that you don't have Nintendo Switch Online or don't have any friends that can assist you, the other option is just to control two characters by yourself. Each Nintendo Switch system comes with two Joy-Cons, so already that's two controllers. When it comes to controlling multiple characters, you have a few options. You could have one character just trail behind you in a bubble and join you at the very end for the flagpole touchdown, or you could carry a player through a level to ensure that you both touch the flagpole at the same time, or you could clear the entire level as a single player and have a second player join at the very end solely for the flagpole requirement. Or you could just play through a level multiple times as different characters. It takes more time, but it is an option. These tricks were very handy for me when I needed to replay the game. I needed to clear most of the levels as Rosalina, but toward the end of the game, I had to clear most of the levels as Mario instead. Once my friends and I unlocked Rosalina in our walkthrough, Mario was rarely ever used again. If you're struggling to clear a level with a specific character, just switch to a character you do know how to use and then connect a controller once the level is nearly finished. And once you complete every level with a character, you'll obtain a stamp of that character. And naturally, there's one stamp for each of the five playable characters. And once these five stamps are obtained, the game is complete. That's a fifth star on the title screen for you, and that's a 100% complete save file. You can still go back and play any level at any time, and you can still play online to help your friends with their save files, but otherwise, that's it. There's nothing left in the game. Well, except for Luigi Bros. See, this game was originally released in 2013, and that was the year of Luigi, so Nintendo released this Luigi-fied version of the arcade Mario Bros. game, and the main difference is that instead of playing as Mario, you play as Luigi. But hey, that certainly doesn't lessen the fact that this little arcade game can be a fun time waster, and I'm glad that it was included with every copy of Super Mario 3D World. But okay, aside from that, that's it. That's everything there is to complete or do in Super Mario 3D World. And with that, this walkthrough can now officially come to a close. I said this in my previous videos, but it really was a nice opportunity to play this game again with friends and record it for my channel. I absolutely adored this game back when it was first released, and I'm glad that it's being given a fresh spotlight in 2021. It's one of my all-time favorite games, and I hope that I was able to capture the joy that this game can bring to players with the series of videos that I've uploaded. It also seems that the Super Nintendo World theme park takes heavy aesthetic inspiration from this game in particular, so that's really neat to see too. I really just want this game to get more attention. It's awesome, and I hope Nintendo makes another game just like it. And if they do, I'll try to record it for my channel. In any case, I really do recommend this game, both for its single player and multiplayer experiences. And even if my walkthrough wasn't the most useful in terms of being some sort of video guide, like walkthroughs are typically supposed to be, I hope that my videos were, at the very least, entertaining to those of you that watched. And now that I've done everything in the game, that wraps up this walkthrough of Super Mario 3D World, and I'd like to thank you all for watching. I hope to see you all in future videos, and I hope to see you all in future walkthroughs, whether they be co-op ones or single player ones. Bye-bye, humans! Whoosh!